Hello and welcome to World News Program. I'm your host, Karim Fez Zachary, and these are the headlines. King Charles III is proclaimed monarch during an accession council ceremony at St. James Palace. Gun salutes were fired by the British military across the UK amid ringing church bells to mark the death of Queen Elizabeth II. Also coming up in our other world news, Moscow is sending columns of military reinforcements to Ukraine's Kharkiv region after the first major Ukrainian counter-attack. Also, dozens of activists in Morocco on Friday held a demonstration denouncing suspicious of sexual harassment and corruption. Hello again and welcome to the program. First in our news, King Charles III is proclaimed monarch during an accession council ceremony at St. James Palace. Proclamation comes after he paid a moving tribute to his mother, the Queen, who died on Thursday at Balmoral. I... Charles III, by the grace of God of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, and of my other realms and territories, King, Defender of the Faith, do faithfully promise and swear that I shall inviolably maintain and preserve the settlement of the true Protestant religion as established by the laws made in Scotland in prosecution of the claim of right and particularly by an act intituled an act for securing the Protestant religion and Presbyterian church government, and by the acts passed in the parliament of both kingdoms for union of the two kingdoms, together with the government, worship, discipline, rights, and privileges of the Church of Scotland. So help me God. And during moments of mourning, King Charles III arrived in London, where he greeted the thousands of people outside the Buckingham Palace, where he delivered his first speech as a king. Nabil Khazini reports. Arriving as a king at Buckingham Palace, Charles III, although in moments of deep mourning, greets the crowds gathered outside. I think he's got a change, but... Uh... I'm sure he will fulfill the role uh, magnificently. Yeah, yeah. And I think he'll be a good king because he had a, his mom as a good example. He has now responsibilities and the call of duty demands him to join what was for 72 years his mother's palace. Joined with his queen consort, Charles III makes his first steps towards the royal castle for the first time as a king before making a statement. Queen Elizabeth was a life well lived a promise with destiny kept, and she is mourned most deeply in her passing. That promise of lifelong service I renew to you all today. In the House of Commons, politics was suspended, a minute of silence instead, and a day dedicated to pay tribute to the Queen. Her late Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II, was one of the greatest leaders the world has ever known. She was the rock on which modern Britain was built. She showed the world not just how to reign over a people, she showed the world how to give, how to love and how to serve. But as we mourn a beloved monarch, we must always remember that she was a mother, a grandmother and a great-grandmother. And my thoughts and prayers are with King Charles III and the whole of the royal family. However life goes on, and so do government obligations, the new Prime Minister Liz Truss was welcomed by the new British King. These are the inherited kingdom's protocols. 
But many things have changed in Great Britain. Even the anthem, untouched for seven decades, now has new lyrics. King Charles III has started a new chapter in the British history. As the royal family has changed, his eldest son, Prince William, takes over from his father by becoming the new Prince of Wales, a title reserved for the eldest of the king or queen, heir to the crown. Still with the passing of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, gun salutes were fired by the British military across the UK amid ringing church bells to mark the death of Queen Elizabeth II. 96 rounds fired from the Tower of London and Hyde Park in honour of the number of the years Queen lived. The King's troop, Royal Horse Artillery, fired the death gun salute in Hyde Park, London. Parts of the British life that have remained unchanged for decades will now be transformed to mark the reign of King Charles III. For the first time in 70 years, the national anthem words will change. God save the Queen to God save the King. Charles will, or Charles' image will replace his mother's on new coins, banknotes and stamps. It's traditional for the new monarch to face the opposite direction to their predecessor. So Charles' image will face left because the Queen faced right. The royal cipher will change. That's the monogram used on everything from mailboxes to police uniforms. Currently, it features the Queen's, Elizabeth, the second Regina stamp below, an image of the crown. There will also be legal changes. Senior lawyers will become the King's Council rather than the Queen's Council, and the government will now be known as His Majesty's government and not Her Majesty's. All right, let's move on now and take a look at what to expect in the hours and days ahead. After being declared that he was sovereign by the Accession Council, King Charles III will meet Prime Minister Liz Truss again and her cabinet on Sunday. The Queen's today will be taken to the Palace of Holyrood House in Edinburgh. A procession will take place the day after. The public may get to file past her coffin into St. Giles Cathedral. Her body will then be taken to London on Tuesday. And from Wednesday, she'll lie in state for four days to allow people to pay their respects. Senior royals will stand guard at some stage in average and tradition known as the Vigil of the Princes. A funeral is expected to take place at Westminster Abbey on Monday. September 19th, two minutes of silence will be observed nationwide. The Queen will then be laid to rest in a chapel in Windsor Castle alongside her parents, sister Margaret and her husband Philip. The President of the Algerian Republic, Mr. Abdel Majid Taboon, also or presented on Friday a message of condolences to King Charles III following the death of Queen Elizabeth II, in which he highlighted the role of the Queen in the promotion of friendly relations between Algeria and Great Britain. The message says, quote, It is with great sadness and deep emotion that we have learned of the death of Her Majesty, the Queen of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, Elizabeth II. In this painful ordeal and circumstance, I present to you and to the royal family and to the British people on behalf of the Algerian people and government, my sincere condolences and assure you of our deepest feelings of compassion and solidarity." Unquote. To other news right now, Moscow is sending columns of military reinforcements to Ukraine's Kharkiv region, according to Russian reports. After the first major Ukrainian counterattack since spring made big territorial gains this week, Ukrainian troops have pushed Russian forces out of number of settlements in the region that Moscow occupied since the first days of its operation. For his part, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky announced on Friday that Kiev forces had retaken 30 localities from Russian troops in the northeast of the country, where Moscow has sent reinforcements to face this offensive. 
At present, the Ukrainian armed forces have liberated and taken control of more than 30 localities in Kharkiv region bordering Russia. The head of the International Atomic Energy Agency, Rafael Grossi, said that shelling of the Ukrainian city of Anna Hoda have led to power outages that compromise the safe operation of the Russian-held Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. The shelling is putting in danger operators and their families, making it difficult to adequately staff the plant. Together, this has significantly increased the risk of a nuclear accident. Let me be clear. The shelling around Saporizhia nuclear power plant must stop and a nuclear safety and security protection zone agreed immediately. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken in Brussels as Washington tries to bolster unity with Europe, which prepares for one of the hardest winters in its history. Hassan Burkin. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken arrived in Brussels on Friday after a visit to Kyiv seeking to promote unity with its allies as Europe prepares for a stormy winter with the rising energy costs. After his meeting with Zelensky the day before, Blinken briefed the 29 allies, affirming that Ukraine had entered a critical period and called on Western countries to keep their support in the coming months and through the winter. Our unity here at NATO, across our alliances and partnerships, at the United Nations and other inter international institutions is essential to advancing our objectives, shared objectives, supporting Ukraine's capacity to defend itself, sustaining pressure on Russia for its aggression, ensuring that Ukraine is in the strongest position when conditions are right for negotiations. We can, we will emerge stronger and in a better place. And that's why it's so vital that we stay the course, that we stay united. Blinken met with NATO Secretary General Jan Stoltenberg and Alliance ambassadors, in which he promised new military aid and was briefed on Ukraine's latest counteroffensive in Kharkiv. NATO pledged to continue providing Ukraine with support to defend itself from Russian aggression for as long as necessary. Uh, the winter is coming, it's going to be hard. And therefore, we need both to continue to supply weapons and ammunition, but also uh, winter clothing, uh, 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 um, tents, uh, generators, and all the specific equipment which is needed for, uh, uh, for the winter. Partly because the size of the Ukrainian army has just increased so much, they need more of this kind of uh, winter equipment. And NATO is particularly focused on how can we provide tens of thousands of, for instance, winter uniforms to uh, the Ukrainian uh, uh, army. This visit to Europe comes as experts say shortage and rising cost of living risk undermining Western support for Kyiv as government tried to calm their resentful populations. The Russian president Vladimir Putin said on Friday that his country would export 30 million tons of grain by the end of the year and that Russia was ready to increase this volume to 50 million tons. In total, by the end of the year, we will supply 30 million tons of grain and we are ready to increase this volume to 50 million tons or more, because this year's harvest, thank God, was good. EU energy ministers on Friday tasks the European Commission to press ahead with a cap on the revenues of non-gas power producers benefiting from soaring energy prices while backing away from capping Russian gas prices. More in this report. European energy ministers on Friday supported a series of urgent actions to curb rising prices for gas and electricity consumption and asked the European Commission to prepare a practical proposals to begin actually reflecting them in the coming days. We have to set and send a clear and strong signal that we will do whatever it takes in order to protect our households, our economies. The ministers asked the European Commission to prepare other emergency measures, including a broader gas price cap, not specifically targeting Russia. Now I will explain on the four areas. First, capping the revenues of electricity producers 
with low production costs and introducing solidarity contribution from fossil fuel companies, which will be used to mitigate the impact on high energy prices on customers. The European Commission, which did not include the general gas price cap in the list of measures it suggested to countries ahead of the meeting, warned that capping liquefied natural gas prices in Europe could risk supplies going to other markets, depriving Europe of much-needed fuel. The general price cap, including LNG imports, could present a security of supply challenge because the LNG market is a global market. Um, we are not among the big, three biggest LNG importing um, regions. The European Union has failed to obtain the support of the majority of its members to rise Russian gas prices, with Moscow threatening a total supply cut. However, the Union's energy ministers at their extraordinary meetings in Brussels agreed to develop steps to protect citizens and businesses from rising energy bills. The United States imposed sanctions on Friday on Iran's Ministry of Intelligence and its minister, accusing them of being tied to a disruptive July cyber attack on Albania and engaging in other cyber activities against the United States and its allies. Iran rejected the sanctions, proclaiming that they were ineffective and politically motivated. Israeli sources reported that seven occupation soldiers were injured by the targeting of a military tower in Beit Umar, north of Hebron. Local sources added that the use targeted the tower with a large number of Molotov cocktails and locally manufactured packaging setting it ablaze. Videos showed Israeli ambulances flocked to the venue. A series of strong earthquakes has shaken Indonesia's province, West Papua. At least four land-based earthquakes between 6.2 and 5.5 magnitudes were recorded on Saturday and centered about 37 kilometers northwest of central Mambarama district in West Papua. To the African continent now, African ministers meeting in Cairo two months ahead of the COP27 climate summit called on Friday for a sharp expansion of climate financing for the continent. A communique released after a three-day forum for finance, economy and environment, ministers said Africa benefited from less than 5.5% of global climate financing despite having a low carbon footprint and suffering disproportionate or disproportionately from climate change. Local officials said dozens of civilians were killed this week in Talatai, a town located in northeastern Mali, at crossroads of influence for rival terrorist groups. The exact death toll remains unknown. The Tigrayan rebels have offered a conditional truce as fighting intensifies between rebels and pro-government forces and humanitarian aid is cut off in northern Ethiopia. In a letter sent Wednesday to UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, Tigray People's Liberation Front leader called for a conditional end to hostilities as fighting intensified on several fronts. Dozens of activists in Morocco on Friday held a demonstration in front of the parliament building, denouncing suspicions of sexual harassment and corruption, which took place at the Zionist embassy office in Rabat. Miriam Zian. Around 100 pro-Palestinian demonstrators denounced normalization with the Zionist entity on Friday in Rabat, after Israel has recalled its top envoy to Morocco amid an internal investigation of sexual misconduct. According to Israeli media, the envoy is facing allegations of exploiting Moroccan women, sexual harassment and indecent exposure. The accused has not only abused women but was also involved in embezzlement and corruption affairs. The scandal circulated widely in international media whereas Morocco has turned a blind eye to it. Meanwhile, the Moroccan crowd sang slogans against the rapprochement between Morocco and the Zionist entity, 
Attacking Gavran Zainas ambassador to Morocco, as well as Nasser Borita, Morocco's head of diplomacy. The rally in front of the parliament ended with protesters burning an Israeli flag. The Peruvian president has reaffirmed his country's commitment to defend the right of Sahrawi people for self-determination. In a tweet, the Peruvian president said, quote, one year after establishing diplomatic relations with the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic, we reaffirm our persistence in the defense of its sovereign self-determination. And finally, in our news, the Lusail Stadium, the last of tournament's eight enclosures, was officially inaugurated on Friday during a match between the champion clubs of Saudi Arabia and Egypt, Al-Hilal and Zamalek. The opening ceremony was accompanied with big fireworks and a stadium full of fans. All right, here is a reminder of our top stories. King Charles III is proclaimed monarch during an accession council ceremony at St. James Palace. Gun salutes were fired by the British military across the UK amid ringing church bells to mark the death of Queen Elizabeth II. Moscow sending columns of military reinforcements to Ukraine's Kharkiv region after the first major Ukrainian counter-attack. And finally, dozens of activists in Morocco on Friday held demonstrations denouncing suspicions of sexual harassment and corruption. Well, that's it for today's World News. For more news stories, don't forget to follow us on our social media platforms as shown below, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and YouTube. Thank you for watching and take care.